Hi, I'm Tony Grinberg, and I'm running for re-election to the Fargo City Commission. I've had a long-standing history of public service in my career, uh, both as a former lawmaker and, and serving in the legislature, and uh, also in involvement in many aspects of the community and the work that I've done in economic development. So I'm running to bring my skills to keep Fargo moving forward in the areas of public safety, uh, revitalization of our neighborhoods, core neighborhoods, as well as sound infrastructure, flood protection, and job creation. I am not opposed to adding seats, but I think fundamentally, as you know, um, that was part of a task force on election reform. You know, Fargo has a, a very sound uh, form of government now, the city of Fargo. We have great employees and we have a, a home rule charter. That empowers the mayor to be the CEO of the city with four city commissioners. And if we're going to have a discussion about adding commissioners, what are our goals? Is it a reform of the Home Rule Charter uh, by adding commissioners and more uh, additional work responsibility? And what are, what are the citizens, what are the goals of adding two commissioners versus just for the sake of adding two? So my uh, answer to that would be, I'm not opposed to it, but we have to be uh, thoughtful and uh, process and what are we trying to achieve with that? Um, and ultimately that would have to be put in front of the voters. It works in many of the counties in North Dakota. Um, and so with this election in June, uh, obviously because of COVID-19, uh, it's going to be all mail, uh, mail in. And I think the main thing is the registration of voters and the communication, particularly for this election, so people understand what the form means. There's been some confusion about the various boxes, but I think people will become accustomed to this. And um, I think in the end of the day, um, it's going to be a, an example in Cass County how it's worked in other counties in the state, so it could very well become a new norm. Traditionally, um, well for the last, oh gosh, um, many years it's been um, June with the primary election for city races, city commission and example and mayor's race. In the past, it used to be a special election in April. Um, and as you might recall, that um, decision was made to just move, move that to June to save some expense. Um, you know, whether it's June or whether it's November, um, you know, the other option would be November uh, in the general election. Then it's going to even be further down the ballot because there's more races statewide, um, you know, whether it's a presidential year or the governor um, primary. Um, you know, I think, it, I think it's six one half dozen the other. Um, I think it serves its purpose with June, uh, but it could also work in November. Uh, I personally believe that um, elected to the city commission, you represent the entire city. I don't favor wards, and here's why. As the current structure in our home rule charter, each of us is assigned uh, portfolios. And so the portfolio that I have and lead is the planning department. My concern then is planning and issues across the entire city, and not just focused on an issue and a, and a ward. So I think, you know, from a standpoint of looking at the city at large, and uh, dealing with those in a portfolio approach works for us very well. Um, and so I would not be in favor of, of wards because it tends to create more, from what I've read, um, you know, wards competing against one another. And I don't think that's good for, good for Fargo long term. Well, certainly, you know, there are laws that protect certain data and um, privacy of individuals. You know, uh, I believe we have a very transparent form of government uh, locally um, and those that are interested and want more information and access uh, all you know they basically do have to put the effort in and ask um, to further you know delin or to distinguish you know process you know uh, let's take example of the election reform task force that was a very public transparent process where everyone had the opportunity to participate listen and uh, likewise with the special assessment task force it was it was a transparent process now that wasn't you know really infringing on personal uh, privacy issues, but it's just one aspect that, you know, government um, works well uh, when it responds to citizens and their needs, and, um, you know, citizens need engagement to make that happen. How do we increase access? Well, um, you know, COVID-19, now everything is electronic. Um, even prior, uh, citizens can, you know, watch online and watch on the local access channel. Um, citizens have the right to um, have their voice heard on whatever the issue at any given meeting. Um, and so 
maybe more education on that front so people have their voice to be heard. Um, but from an access standpoint, technology um, really is pretty uh, cross-cutting with um, options for people to know and understand, um, whether it's a task force work or whether it's a, the planning commission. And um, folks that have questions or want to be involved, um, there's a way for that to happen. Um, it just, um, it, they need to exercise their rights. Uh, well, it certainly works for those with regular work schedules. Um, you know, public hearings start at 515 um, and the regular, you know, it, we kick the meeting off at 5. Um, you know, I think traditionally that's been why it's set up that way, so the public has the, you know, the ability with a normal work schedule to appear um, and provide their feedback or uh, concerns on a particular issue. Um, I wouldn't be in favor of moving that during the day because it just is, you know, it's, it's going to be more challenging for people to either get out of work um, and um, so whether it's 5 to 7 or 5.30 to 7.30, um, um, I think that's, you know, I think what the public would really, at the end of the day, uh, want to preserve. You know, I, I will approach that the same way that uh, when I, my time in the legislature, um, after I was elected, I um, learned what the, the pay was for being a legislator. Likewise, after I was elected to city commission, I learned, you know, what the pay was. So I had no knowledge of it going into it because my passion was to continue to serve. Um, you know, I think there's a delicate balance there of citizen um, involvement um, and folks that have the opportunity to serve, whether you're in a, a professional position or in a trade. Um, you know, that's, the, that's really the, I think, the, the reason for people to want to run. Uh, I, I would never want to see the salary being at a point where that's the incentive to run. Um, so I think, you know, the balance of 26000 a year based on time at the current structure with our home rule charter is sufficient. I think we follow state uh, legislature and state reform and we are now, you know, abiding by new uh, reporting requirements. Uh, they aggregate where the expenses are, and I think that's that to be consistent with elections across the state. It's important to be part of the state and not having our own particular um, additions. I just think that's the practical side, whether it's the city or the county or the park district or school district. I think it needs to be uniform, uh, and that debate is in Bismarck and the legislature. And I, I'm pleased with what they did. It took a while, um, but it, um, it hit more transparency on, on reporting and. Yeah, I have, you know, I appreciate the, the question, um, you know, and I, I guess I'd answer it in two ways. You know, as a college student, you know, I, I shared earlier that I used to work at the Holiday Inn when I was finishing my last year, year and a half in college. And, you know, one of my professors really inspired me in my last year about, you know, it's important to get your degree and start a profession and start a family, but it's also important to give back, be part of your community, be engaged in your community. And that really resonated with me since 19, 85, um, when um, I had the opportunities to be involved, whether it was the Chamber of Commerce as a volunteer, whether it was in a local museum as a volunteer board member. There are so many ways, and most org all organizations, to my knowledge, in Fargo allow for that civic engagement. So part of that is really an education process, an open door, uh, open arms, uh, embrace of folks who want to get involved, and then also comes from within. You have to want to. You have to want to be engaged, and uh, things don't come to you by waiting. You have to you have to step out of your comfort zone and actually want to be engaged civically. So I think it's a combination of personal desire as well as um, a community, which I believe is open to. Uh, that's what makes our community great: uh, is people get involved in so many different aspects and volunteerism and support for people, um, charities. Um, you know, we're there's not many communities that can match what we have in Fargo. Well, I have a Facebook page, and um, it's Grinberg for Fargo, and um, I have a lot of my bio and background there, as well as the City of Fargo website. There's a bio in, uh, on the City Commission website, and um, you know, I, I, I typically use Facebook for key things that are going on in the community to share. Uh, a lot of COVID-19 information has been shared in the past, and of course my re-election efforts, um, the endorsements I received, my positions. Um, which are, you know, public safety, uh, revitalizing core neighborhoods, infrastructure, and um, growth. And so those, those are the two areas that you can learn more about me. Um, it's Facebook and or the, the bio on the City Commission webpage.